Hi, it's me here, Phil again, and I am, well, currently just uh, in the bathroom, you know, uh, you know, only place I can, uh, well, it's not that bad. I mean, I am going to try out some food again. This time, we're trying out authentic Vietnamese candy. Yes, that's right. This stuff. Top Fruit, apparently, is the brand, and it's uh, real nice. Real nice. More joy, more enjoyment. Hmm. All right. Cooey fudge. Well, it's not fudge flavored. It's strawberry. Fruit juice, soft sweet candy, pure juice candy. I know. I have uh, tried some of this before. Got it authentic from Vietnam. My parents went on vacation for that. What's this? Rich in juice amount uh, over to equal to 7%. Some kind of seal of quality, if you can see that here. Hmm. You know, trying out candy of all things. Don't mind my uh, my disfigurement, that's just a uh, blister and a uh, sunburn, it's nothing. Maybe you should put a hat over your bald head next time you go out. Well, I didn't think it was going to be that hot out anyway. Anyway, here we go. Let's try the uh, strawberry flavored one. I've had these before and they are pretty cool. Noticeably uh, sticky sort of thing. Big red sticky thing, very jellyish, very juicy. Look at that redness. Oh yeah, that's dry. Mm. Not like a gushers or something. Mm. You see, like gushers fruit snacks, they'd have like liquid jelly in the side of it or fruit jelly sort of thing. Oh, this one's gelatin all the way through. Big red. Strawberry flavor, very nice. A uh, very nice flavor, I should say. Hmm, nice. I kind of wonder, what's even the point of these sort of reviews I'm making? Like, you can't transmit taste over the internet. You can't transmit that into video format. You can't record flavors and smells in, into videos. Hypothetically speaking, people do have the technology necessary to invent smell-o-vision. Smell up the uh, sights you see on television because it's simply a synchronized program. But you can make synchronized sound that connects to the video footage. You can see my lips move when I am talking. This is not some dubbed foreign movie <laughs> this is real and in theory you could do the same thing to build smell vision but you know due to the physics of it you have to have these like capsules that you need to replace constantly for your uh, system setup and it have to be dependent on what sort of things you actually want to smell that's probably the reason why perfume commercials are so weird when you think about it. Perfume commercials. Well, all they've got is sights and sounds and visual footage, but they can't transmit the smell. So how are they going to inform you of what the perfume smells like? And then it results in some weird artsy sort of movie where it's all black and white and people are making all these weird statements and all these images and like... At least with deodorant commercials, they at least try to tell you this is good for you. It's going to improve your reputation. It's going to make you more attractive and things like that. I mean, that's the best they can tell you. Will I be attractive even with this horrid disfigurement I have right here? Is this a uh, horror movie? In this feature film, we have... Dr. Frankenstein surgically cutting open the cranium skull and putting a new brain in there. 
stuff like that, you know? Anyway, let's try the pineapple flavored one. Or is it mango? Real fruit. Real fruit candy from Vietnam. My parents sure had a fun vacation. Oh, I nearly lost it. Now this big yellow thing is not a piece of cheese, but rather it is uh, mango flavored. Not it's uh, opaque rather than uh, partially translucent. Oh yeah, that's mango flavor or something. Mm. Very nice. And uh, hmm. yeah, thick gelatin all the way through. Very nice. Trying out that uh, exotic candy and foods and such. Very nice stuff they got over there. Um, usually people, they, they try a few Japanese things like Pocky. It's like chocolate on a stick or something. Okay. And supposedly there's also a, a green tea flavored Kit Kat bar. It looks like chocolate, but it's all green all the way through. It tastes just like it, supposedly. That's neat. That's neat. Yeah. Vietnam. Reading up on the history of it. Wild. Quite a few points. <laughs> of course, the most I know about these things are from movies about the Vietnam War, which is only a small slice of the history, you should remember. <laughs> it's been around for centuries, you know. A country. It's even a playable faction in Age of Empires 2. And retroactively, Age of Empires 1, due to the uh, new expansions and such, so I've heard. Now, this one, the third type, different wrapping, different packaging. Admittedly, this is my least favorite of the three. It's coconut flavored. That's not a problem, but the trouble is there's just this one part in the middle that doesn't really dissolve at all. It's, I guess it's the raw coconut, the uh, white substance that's in there. And the uh, first time I tried this, I thought maybe they actually had plastic in here. Like I missed a spot, but uh, no. This. Okay, now that's dissolving, but I don't know where the plastic starts and where it ends. I don't want to be eating plastic, and I don't want to. I don't want to get microplastics in my system. I've heard some people have that, and that's pretty pretty darn sad. Plastic waste. Got to dispose of that. Hmm. That's for the coconut flavor of it. Yeah, it's pretty good. Kind of like toffee. Taffy. Hmm. Coconut flavored taffy. It's just, it's all right. But, um, probably my least favorite of the three. Uh, hmm. But that's got me worried. People supposedly have microplastics in their systems. From what I've heard, people tell, talk about their medical condition and such. Sad. Um, there was that meme, perhaps you've seen it, the three generations of people. Oldest one has asbestos in their system. Uh, grandpa, that's who. Middle one, father, has uh, lead in his systems. That's not good for you. And the child has... Uh, microplastics in the system. Oh, that's real sad. It's supposedly plastic never really decays. It's gonna like stay, stays there forever. And it doesn't decay. You gotta recycle it, melt it down, but once it's like grain granular and chopped up into such small pieces, smaller than dust particles, what can you do with it? What can be done? Sad sort of environmental concern. 
Mm. Gotta recycle. Gotta care for the planet. I don't know why there's so uh, people on the internet they have such a hatred for that cartoon show Captain Planet and the Planeteers. Admittedly, when I was younger, I only saw a small slice of it, and I watched lots of uh, the episodes on YouTube years ago when they were all posted. Pretty sure it's easy to find online. Cat and Planet. Environmental protection, it's a noble cause. Probably the people, they don't like it so much if they're too heavy-handed about the subject. All right, fair enough. It does happen to the best of us. I wonder if they would remake that series. I mean, there's no shortage of environmental concern. <coughs> you know those protests they've been having over in Europe where they're getting really, really peeved off with the, you know, the, the activists, the environmental climate change activists, the people they want to, they're being irrational about the way they're protesting. They go into museums and vandalize the art. And they say, this isn't what you should pay attention to. You need to pay attention to the environment. And I'm like, yeah, but no one's going to be your friend if you're being an asshole. No one, too much of that, people aren't going to like it. They won't approve. And then people, they try to stop the cars by getting in the middle of the road and clogging up the streets with more traffic and more... You know, you know, traffic, what's it called? Something jam, traffic jam, roadblock. And they just keep making the roads wider and wider and wider. One more lane, just one more lane. It'll be, the traffic will be all sorted if we make the road one more lane larger. And like, Gridlock, that's what it's called. And it, now here's the funny thing though, they say that cars aren't even really the major problem that's causing all that uh, emissions. It's actually the factories and such that are directly devoted to burning fossil fuels, oil and coals and things. Which they wouldn't have to do if they kept one of those more clean nuclear power plants up and running, but then again, People, as you know, in, in Eastern Europe, between Russia and Ukraine, they go to war, and now they don't have their power plants available anymore. Now they have to go back to coal. Oh, great, look where we've gotten ourselves. All modern politics and such. And I know there's been, like, propaganda and such trying to discredit the renewable fuels, but I think they're pretty good. Don't underestimate them. The windmill turbines, wind, water, solar, geothermal, tidal. It's, it's, don't, don't count it out just yet. It's pretty good. Did, did people ever get fusion reactors working, I wonder? Like those nuclear fusion reactors? Like the kind in uh, Spider-Man 2 that Doc Ock was trying to build with his many tentacles? And so, pardon me for turning this into a ramble, but uh, yeah, how come there isn't a reboot of Captain Planet and the Planeteers? There's so many nostalgic TV shows, everyone's getting a reboot here and a reboot there. <coughs> and the difference is, uh, Captain Planet and the Planeteers, that was already a pretty darn left-leaning show just to begin with. The whole premise was environmental protection, and even beyond that, they included a whole other bunch of left-wing talking points. Racism, war, discrimination, social issues, gentrification, poverty, like, population control, like overpopulation, 
and stuff like that. Animal testing. The issues about disposing of radioactive waste, nuclear waste, stuff like that. There was this one episode where uh, supposedly it's based on a real life thing where uh, these people in poverty sort of country, they uh, wanted to take apart medical technology for scrap metal and scrap parts because, you know, they're not using it anymore. It's defunct. Except that's not just a regular old garbage they're poking through. Some of those are radioactive components used in the x-ray machines. And now you got some kids handling up a radioactive chunk of whatever's because they think it's a pretty shiny thing. And then they all get cancer and that's just, that's terrible. Uh, yeah, based on a real, real story, supposedly. Yeah. And like I'm saying before, uh, gang violence, they did at least one episode about that. Even uh, the HIV panic, I'm sure that's probably the episode you are very much familiar with because it's just so infamous, but uh, yeah, uh, the whole town goes all bugger wild on this one guy because it turns out he got infected with HIV and his life goes to hell even before he gets sick, and that's terrible. Uh, so, like I'm saying, there is no shortage of left-wing talking points in this show, like poaching, environmental protection, deforestation, oil drilling, all the environmental stuff, and play liberal points. So, point B, you can't really say it's been liberal-fied and made woke and such because it kind of already was that sort of show like unlike the kind of criticisms i have with star wars star trek transformers or you know he-man or anything like that all the cartoons you like well this one seems like it's ready to go you can't make it any more liberal than it already is though i suspect they'll try <laughs> if they could but no remake of it. This is just so strange to me. There is no remake of Captain Planet and the Planeteers. And yeah, last I heard rumors about Transformers, the cartoon show. For some reason, Megatron and Optimus Prime are now friends and they don't want to fight each other anymore. And now there's a non-binary Transformer who would rather than fight, just lecture you about the kind of pronouns they use. Okay, okay. I wasn't watching the show anyway, so you don't care what I have to, <laughs> you don't care if I'm not watching. <sighs> okay, I'll show you respect, I'll show people their due respect if they want me to use pronouns and such. I will. I will. Uh, but I kind of wanted to watch a cartoon about robots fighting each other. And not that, but... And then there's He-Man and the Masters in the Universe, where... Where Kevin Smith apparently has lost his mind and just wanted to make this insane cartoon. Okay. Well, there's no way G.I. Joe is going to be returning to television. I don't think so. No, I'm not. Not if it's going to be, not left me. You've heard the stories, right? Where there was a panel for the production of G.I. Joe. And they had all these full grown, like, 50 year old men being instructed to just state their pronouns before they start talking. I'm like, guys, 
Really now? You're gonna ask them to do that? Okay. And then there was this, well, from what I've heard uh, from the comic review website, uh, they actually did try to make a few comics about G.I. Joe and setting, but of course, it's written by a bunch of people who are anti-Trump people, and so they wanted to make a, a United States of America that was conquered by Cobra, and everyone just has to live under their boot heel, because that's what they truly believe America was under Trump. And I'm like, guys, come on. This is just cringe. I'm sorry, that's just cringe. Well, this has turned into quite a ramble. <laughs> I don't think anyone's even paying attention to the words I'm saying here, but yeah. Cap Captain Planet, he's our hero. Gonna take pollution down to zero. And the credits roll on, on the bad guy, loot and plunder. He's like, you'll pay for this, Captain Planet. <laughs> I kind of like the cheesiness of it. And then other left-wing stuff. Greta Thunberg. Or is it pronounced Thunberg? Thunderberg? <laughs> I, I don't want to pick on a child or anything, but I'm guessing that's kind of the point of why they hired a child to do this job. Because... No one's allowed to tease her or poke fun at her because, you know, then you're teasing a child. That's so, I guess she's indestructible until she grows up and becomes an adult. Then you can be criticized like anything else. A spoiled child who refuses to go to school until they change the weather for her. And don't go saying I'm being mean and bullying. I am autistic as well. I was an autistic child. And I was pretty law-abiding, well-behaved, generally speaking. When I was a kid. And in fact, I did kind of like watching environmental cartoons on YouTube. Captain Planet and the Planeteers. I mean, can you imagine what it would look like if they actually did remake that in modern day, modern day reboot? I mean, what's stopping them? Really now, what's stopping them? It's like, that's actually a silver platter put right in front of them. Wait, really, why didn't they do that? What? And it's not like the whole element stuff is out of touch. I mean, Avatar The Last Airbender, we already had oh, the four elements plus heart or spirit or whatever you call it. And they're united together into one being who is capable of doing all that and more. So too bad that one doesn't have a good remake either. <laughs> Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. Uh, oh man. And you know what? Supposedly the Thundercats cartoon reboot was also pretty bad. Not the uh, more anime style one, but the, uh, the bean mouth type. You know the kind. Bean mouth art style. <laughs> the big mouth open with a big sausage shaped mouth and big bean face. And like, <laughs> and cartoons. And much to my disappointment, a uh, fifth generation of My Little Pony also added that art style. Cow art style. Great. Great. So now it looks just like Steven Universe. 
and The Adventures of Gumball. And all those other cartoons and Clarence and oh man, I don't even watch dumb cartoons anymore. I mean, I'm just I guess that's it. Have a good day. Why not watch some good cartoons while you're here on YouTube, if I could suggest that. You know, put yourself in a better mood. Have a good day.